Eric was a responsible man. Although he looked cold on the surface, there was a tenderness in his bones. People who were close to him would recognize his tenderness without hesitation. The closer the relationship, the easier it was to see. Emily smiled and leaned against Eric's broad shoulders. This was the source of her greatest sense of security. She took out her phone and saw the comments under Eva's trending post. Although there were fans who expressed their support, there were still others who were not so kind. She read them all. Coming out to play again? If there is evidence, why not announce it now? I can't believe I ever liked your movies. You don't deserve to be a celebrity. Are you insane? There is no reason for the entertainment circle to attack you as you claim. You make money for them. Why would they do this? It doesn't make any sense. None of it makes sense. Stop talking nonsense. I refuse to ever watch another movie you appear in. You disgust me the way you flaunt your celebrity and fame. Emily quickly flipped through the pages and then turned off her phone. She'd read enough. She hoped Eva was smart enough to turn off her phone too. I took a look at the trending comments. Most of the people still don't believe Eva. I feel that these things need to be addressed as soon as possible. I'm afraid if we don't get ahead of it, the comments will just continue to pile up and more public resentment will come to light. I know she's strong, but even she has to have her breaking point. She had made claims against the entertainment circle too. I don't think they'll sit idly by and have their reputation sullied either. They'll likely issue a statement of their own soon to refute her claims. Eric's expression was tense. He frowned. Although he was expressionless, his eyes narrowed as he thought things are over. Find someone to check the photos carefully and see if any of them were doctored. Also, find the person who took the photos. Someone has to know something, no matter what the company's staff like to talk. We'll find someone. I know it. Eva didn't do these things. We'll restore her reputation and bring the war to James's doorstep. If it's war he wants, it's a war we will give him. Eric's eyes became sharp. He began nodding his head as if he was confirming his initial thoughts. I'm able to help too. I've been checking in with Estelle and things are going smoothly for Coopers. Just tell me what you need me to do and I'll gladly do it. If it was a battle of capital, the Parker family had the entertainment circle beat. With the addition of Cooper's resources, they could leverage it all and force James to back down. It would be worth it to see the snake squirm with their findings. After making up his mind, Eric brought Emily back to the Parker family estate. Mr. Parker was still at the hospital receiving treatment, the estate quiet and still. Allison was currently living in prison, serving her sentence. Evelyn had completely disappeared for the moment, likely trying to come to grips with her new life. Franklin and Helen were left to take care of John and Mr. Parker for the time being. They were more than happy to do so. Ever since he appeared in the hospital, Eric's attitude had been very clear. The Parker family belonged to him. Only in his hands could they have a stable development and reach greater heights. However, if Mr. Parker insisted on taking it away, he wouldn't care about it at all. When Emily arrived home, she immediately stretched and sat on the sofa. She was exhausted and wanted nothing more than to take a long bath and go to bed. I'm so tired, I don't want to move, she said. Is that so? Eric asked, a playful tone in his voice. She'd been so busy today. She felt like she never had a chance to sit still and relax, even for a minute. The edge of Eric's mouth rose a grin stealing across his mouth. Do you need a hug after such a long day? Yes, Emily said, standing and hugging Eric tightly. Her body ached with the stress of the day. She stepped back once they broke the hug and looked at Eric. She was so lucky to have him in her life. The thought of going through something like this alone was terrifying to her. She couldn't imagine what Eva was going through. She had no one with her. Emily hoped that once Nathan made contact, the two of them could work something out together to be a part of each other's lives. She bit her lower lip, hoping it would work out. I'm going to take a bath. I need to wash the mess of this day off. Okay, I think I'll shower when you're done. She smiled and blew him a kiss. He winked at her. With the hot water hugging her tightly, her body was finally able to relax, though her mind continued to go over everything that had happened with Eva. She knew they would make things right, but she wondered if it would be as easy as Eric thought. She had her doubts in her mind. Following her bath, she toweled off while sitting on the small bench in the bathroom. 
The aroma of her bath bomb teased her nose. It was the smell of lavender and roses. When she opened the bathroom door, she realized there was flickering light filling the bathroom. Eric? He didn't answer. Walking into the hallway, she made her way to the bathroom, candles lining every flat surface. Eric stood on the far side of the bed with a rose in his hand and a smile on his face. How was your bath? His voice was playful. She shrugged, a wide smile spreading her lips. It was okay, nothing special. That right. Nodding, she said. Yeah, a little disappointing. They stood looking at each other across the bed. Thought you were going to shower, Emily said, teasing Eric. Indeed, I was. And now? Emily asked. It can wait. Emily stood in front of the mirror and ran a brush through her hair. She had a smile on her face, thinking about the previous evening. It had been so nice. I will go wake John and get his day started. Thinking of John, Emily smiled. They were becoming a happy family of three. It was heavenly. After Emily finished getting ready, she ate breakfast at the Parker family estate and sent John to school with Eric. After that, she went to Cooper's. Before dealing with the Eva situation any further, she had to ensure the safety of Cooper's. Emily had to make some tough decisions regarding Cooper's. She had a nice supporting cast, people willing and able to step up when needed. In the last few months, she'd been away from the office more than she'd been in the previous five years. She had not been as cautious as she'd once been. She let Estelle and Jimmy take over the day-to-day -day operations. Emily wasn't worried with Cooper's in their hands. When she came to Cooper's, she did not go to her own office. Instead, she knocked on the door and entered Estelle's office, eager for an update. So you remember where we are? Estelle chuckled and smiled. It's so good to see you. It's nice of you to stop in and check on us non-world travelers. Are you doing okay? Estelle teased her and stood from her chair. Emily smiled and said, I would have been back sooner if I'd found out that you and Jimmy were running Coopers into the ground. But imagine my surprise. That's not what happened. You two have both been doing well. I promise to give both of you and Jimmy a much-needed vacation. You can pick. Any place at all. I'll repay any cost. I seem to have made a profit from this deal after all. Estelle blinked playfully. Yes, you have. Even with the vacation, it's not enough for all that you've done. Estelle, you are irreplaceable. I'm not sure what I would do without you by my side. Emily said with a smile. The two of them talked things over for a few minutes, Estelle updating Emily on a few things that had happened in the past few weeks. Our progress with the Minder family is going well. Estelle handed Emily the reports. She smiled. Estelle was right. Things were going well. Have you had any trouble with Tori? No, it's the strangest thing. I fully expected there to be some friction between us, but she's been kind and honest in our meetings. I've had her investigated to make sure everything was going as it should, and we found nothing out of the ordinary. Estelle raised her brows. We went into the meetings thinking we were going to have a battle on our hands, only to find her gracious and magnanimous. Strange. Emily raised her brows, a look of surprise spilling across her face. It definitely didn't seem like the Tory she knew. This does not seem like Tory's style. After suffering such a huge loss, I thought she would find all sorts of things to make up for it. I agree, it definitely seems strange. Emily rubbed her chin and thought for a while, before saying, No matter what, we still have to keep a close eye on her. I'm not sure we can ever trust Tori. It's even more important now because this is our first project together. So it is better to be on guard. We can't let her take advantage of us in any way. I feel she'd ruin us in a heartbeat if she felt she could. Estelle nodded. I agree. I'll definitely pay close attention to her and her staff. Emily touched her chin and stretched. She smiled and said, Estelle, I'll need to be out of touch for a few more days. If you need anything at all, please reach out. This will be the last time I'll have to do this. Also, I might need your help on a bit of investigating, but I won't know until sometime tomorrow. If you need anything as always, you can contact me. I might add a company card to the vacation if you keep up the good work. Estelle looked at her helplessly. You know, I checked my salary just last week, and I realized you had given me quite the raise over the last couple of years. 
Was this the reason? Not at all. Increases in salary should be expected. Estelle, thank you for your hard work. I will be back soon. Emily playfully blinked her eyes. Estelle smiled. Don't worry, I will monitor Tori and this supposed project we're working on. I will inform you immediately if anything happens. I won't make any decision on my own, though. Rest assured, I'll contact you to make the final decision. Nathan should have arrived the previous evening at Eva's place. Emily sent a text to him, asking him how it was going, but he hadn't replied yet. What they needed to do next was to win the public opinion battle. Emily opened the webpage and searched for the photos of Eva and the half-dozen men she supposedly took home with her over a number of weeks. Before she could go through the photos, a new story popped up along the top edge of the page. It was from the entertainment circle. This statement was very official, but it stated that they were entirely innocent in the scandal. They also reiterated that Eva had done the things she was rumored to have done. The final statement was that they weren't able to clarify further because of a confidentiality clause in their contract. They did also state that their legal department was looking to recoup losses on Eva's contract with her leaving the company. It seemed like James's decision was crystal clear. He had ignored the warnings. He was digging in for a long and ugly battle. The moment the official announcement was made, public opinion changed once again. Even the fans who previously believed in Eva began to doubt again. In addition, the influence of the Reynolds family in the entertainment circle was obvious. No one would offend the Reynolds family just because of Eva. After all, famous stars could disappear at any time, and new generations would appear one after another. There was no lack of good-looking and ambitious artists out there looking to break into Hollywood. Emily did not dare to delay, and immediately closed the announcement in related news. Instead, she found who had taken the photos and sent someone to investigate the background of each one. The photos were confirmed as the original. They were not forged. There was the possibility that Eva was drunk and the photos had been taken without her knowledge. Emily stood up and stretched after tidying up things. She immediately received a message from Eric asking her to make a trip to Grill 712 in the afternoon. Nathan had already returned. She quickly replied and got her things together before leaving. When she went downstairs, she saw Eric waiting for her. He opened the car door and invited her to take a seat. She sat in the passenger seat and he closed the door. When did you get here? Why didn't you tell me? Emily never thought Eric would wait for her. It was such a pleasant surprise. It was the boost she needed. I just got here. Eric smiled and pinched her cheek. He said softly, I just didn't want to wait for you to get home. Are you hungry? I bought some cake and milk for us to share later. Emily took the milk and opened it, taking a sip. Just as she was about to speak, Eric brought out the slice of cake. He smiled and moved his eyebrows up and down. Now this is just too much. Well, then perhaps I should just take the milk and cake back? Eric playfully reached for her. Don't you dare! I'm going to finish this cake and milk first. Emily smiled and stuck out her tongue. A few moments later, Eric pulled away from the curb. Thirty minutes later, they pulled up to Grill 712 for dinner. Though it was still closed to the public, they went inside, knowing Nathan was waiting for them. In the main dining room, Nathan and Eva were sitting on a couch. Today, Eva did not have any makeup on, the way she did when Emily met her during shooting. Gone were the eyelash extensions and the professionally applied makeup. In their place was a plain-looking face. Though her features were considered delicate, she appeared worn and haggard. With her hair down in her simple wardrobe, she looked like the girl next door rather than a movie star. The production crew asked me to take some time to rest. I didn't want to wait for them to arrange transportation and just came on my own. Emily and Eric quickly looked at each other. Emily smiled and said, It's just nice to give yourself a vacation now and then. Speaking of which, I have something very important to trouble you with. What is it? Eva pointed at herself. She did not know what else she could do to help in her current situation. Emily laughed silently. Well, we are fans, big fans, but our young son is obsessed with you. I was wondering if it might be possible for you to come and meet him. Perhaps we could have dinner. If you could just meet him and perhaps pose for a picture together, he would be over the moon. Do you think that is something you could do for us? 
Eva finally revealed a smile and nodded. Of course, I'm always happy to do things for my fans. Without them, where would I be? Her smile brought her eyes to life. I can stop by any time. Just let me know when it would be for you and your schedule. Well, why don't you come in and take a seat? I'll prepare a meal for you all, and we can talk about it all together. What do you say? She went to the kitchen. The three took seats together in a booth and began to make small talk. Eric had met Eva when they were both quite young, so they relived bits and pieces of their childhoods together. Emily and Eva were comfortable with each other after meeting at the lounge, where Emily shared what she knew about Nathan's father. Since you have come to New York City, why not go and see the sights for a few days? We can work to resolve the issues at hand. I'd suggest staying offline for your stay. We will work to come up with a plan, at which point you can get back to your social media accounts. Emily did not want to talk about this, but she had to put it out on the table, so Eva knew where they stood. Eva laughed and said, Oh, Nathan already made the same suggestion. And don't worry, I have no intention of going online to read what the trolls have to say about me. The entertainment circle has made it their mission to ruin me. I couldn't let that happen. But now that I've said my piece, I don't intend on going back to social media. It's truly ridiculous. I still don't understand why the entertainment circle set out to blacklist me. But now that they have, I intend to relax for a few days and enjoy some nice company. As Eva spoke, she shrugged her shoulders and said, I'm not surprised by their tactics. They've done it before and I'm sure they'll do it again. Your outlook is better than mine. I would be if I were in your shoes. Emily raised her eyebrows in surprise. Eva touched her ears, tugging on her earrings. It's hard to get used to, but believe me, it comes with the territory. If you let it get to you, you'll never get out of bed to face the day. I have learned to let it roll off my back. I can't control what others say or feel, so I just let it go. Because public opinion is easy to manipulate, as long as you know where to apply pressure and how to properly bait the trap. While Eva had fought back against it before, it could be exhausting. She had stayed off of her social media accounts to keep the peace and relax. Emily seemed pleased Eva was going to be staying in the city. Since you are here, unplug and relax during your stay. Okay, thank you. Eva smiled, taking a sip of her wine. Nathan had been back in the kitchen for a long time. Emily thought something might have happened to him. She was about to take a look when Eric patted her hand, whispering, He is just a little nervous. I think he is trying to figure out how to behave. Emily suddenly understood and smiled helplessly. She came out and began to put the plates in front of each of them. I haven't cooked for a few days and I'm a little rusty. This is just the first course, so please save some room for the rest. Nathan sounded a little nervous. Emily noticed he had been staring at Eva from the moment he came back from the kitchen. Nathan immediately held his breath as Eva tired some of the fish. Delicious! But did you change your way of cooking? This is incredible, Nathan. The meal was delicious and enjoyable. They all talked and shared bits of themselves in conversation as they cleared their plates. After the meal, they began to talk about the business at hand. Emily said, I have already hired people to investigate the photos. I should be able to find out who took them and everybody who appears in them in just a matter of days. Do you have idea who any of them are? Eva shook her head. I'm sorry, but no, I don't. I've never seen them before. I remember you didn't used to drink. Your alcohol tolerance was very low. When those photos were taken, you look intoxicated. Were you drinking heavily? Nathan asked as he sipped his wine. Eva looked a little uneasy. She lowered her gaze and said, There is a movie coming up that I have a chance to be the female lead in. The producers haven't selected who will play the lead yet. My manager took me out to socialize with the producer and director. I did have a bit too much to drink on a couple of those nights. Nathan's expression suddenly changed, and a fierce look came into his eyes. It makes sense now. Being sociable is one thing, but taking advantage of you and getting you drunk is another entirely. Emily rubbed her forehead. This entertainment circle's methods were really scandalous. Using such tactics against one of their own actors was ridiculous. Eva would suffer irreparable damage.
What about some of the staff from the entertainment circle who commented on interviews? Do you know them? Emily asked. Eva nodded. I do. Two of them are makeup artists. The other two were from the management firm. Those two makeup artists have worked with me for years. They are both close with one another. I don't understand why they would come out and slander me like this. Okay. When you can, send me their names and numbers and leave it to me. I don't think you have too much to worry about. You have shown an incredible amount of resolve during this entire fiasco. While it might be over in the next few days, I suspect it will come to a close within a couple of weeks. Emily said as she took another bite of fish. Eva smiled bitterly. This whole thing really is just ridiculous. I can't believe they would go to such lengths just to get Nathan to change his mind about this lecture. About his future. Yes, it does seem rather strange, doesn't it? Emily smiled and dabbed at her mouth with a napkin. Eric said, I don't feel like James is going to back down. I think he's going to keep pushing until he's satisfied. We will worry about how to push back against James and his methods. What we need you to do is to ignore the messages and stay offline until we're ready. Can you do that? Don't worry, I'm not someone obsessed with reading every comment made by every fan. It's too time-consuming and exhausting. I don't have a problem with staying off my social media accounts. Eva smiled and ate another bite of fish. She really liked Eva's character. The more she got to know her, the more she found herself enamored with her. Emily could understand how she became famous. She commanded attention with every action and every word. The funny thing was, Emily didn't think she was trying to do this at all. She felt like it was just something came naturally to Eva. She wondered if either of the two makeup artists or the two men from the management company had anything to do with setting Eva up for the photos. It was certainly worth looking into. Perhaps they were paid off by James. After coming out of the restaurant, Emily sat in the car for a few moments. She took out her phone and looked at the time. It wouldn't be long before the final stage commenced in the painting competition. She was looking forward to putting this Eva situation behind her so she could concentrate on her preparations for the competition. Eric came to the car and got into the driver's side. He sat down and closed the door. Emily turned her head to look at Eric and asked, Do you have time next month to join me at an event? What kind of event? Eric asked, raising an eyebrow in her direction. I'd rather not say. I want it to be a surprise. Also, I don't think we should be separated for very long as we're working through this stuff with Eva. I have a bad feeling about James and what he's willing to do to get what he wants. Eric nodded slowly, taking her hand in his. The competition in Paris? Eric asked quietly, a knowing smile spreading his lips. He chuckled. He couldn't help himself. Emily looked at him in surprise. How did you know? Eric raised his eyebrows noncommittally. Oh, I have my ways. I saw it in your room earlier. Don't worry, I've already made arrangements so I can accompany you. Emily was so excited. She'd worried herself half to death over whether she should bother asking Eric or not. She knew he was incredibly busy with the Parker family, and now had to deal with the Nathan and Eva situation. She wasn't sure he'd have the time to go. That's great! Eric smiled and squeezed her hand. The following day, Emily received messages from the people in the photos and from those who had taken them. They were all related in some way or another to the entertainment circle. Two of them were professional cameramen. Emily carefully read through their information and started dealing with them the next day. During dinner that evening, Eva's phone started to buzz. She looked at it and realized it was her manager. Eva had been ignoring him since she left the set. She wanted nothing to do with her at the moment. You can take it if you want, just don't tell her you're here with me, Nathan said, squeezing Eva's arm gently. Eva took a deep breath and answered the call on the speakerphone. Eva, where did you go? Where have you been? I went out to clear my head. Relax, I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself, Eva said, her voice sounding cold. Her manager was obviously agitated, her breathing coming through the phone. Eva, we have worked together for a long time. Why did you release that statement earlier? How could you do that to me? Do that to you? Are you so caught up in yourself that you think this is about you? It's about the entertainment circle. 
The company has done nothing to support me through all of this. Please stop trying to contact me right now. Who could have gotten the recording? Who could have taken the pictures during those evenings you took me out to socialize? I'm not stupid, you know? Eva's voice was controlled, but her tone had emotion throughout. Her manager said, Okay, since you found out, then I will tell you the truth. I'm responsible for you and your well-being. There was pressure from the higher-ups to set this up. I had no choice but to be an unwilling participant. If you recant your earlier statement, all the things happening right now will be resolved quickly and quietly. I can also guarantee you the female role in the movie we talked about. They want you. I can all but guarantee an Oscar for your near future. Just think of it. An Oscar. It will open up so many other doors for you and other projects. It will set you up for a life. What are the conditions? Eva asked faintly, rubbing her temples. Her manager cleared her throat, coughing lightly. According to James, he doesn't want you to get involved in the matter between him and Nathan. Also, you have to follow his arrangements. As long as you do it, the future will be bright for you. The company will give all the top resources to you, and we can help sway public opinion back in your favor. How wonderful would that be? Eva chuckled. She couldn't help it. Even her manager was involved. You have to be kidding, right? The very company that set me up is now wanting to make amends and take care of things for me? How could I ever trust anybody at the entertainment circle? I'm sorry to say, but I can't accept the offer. I'm tired of being under James's thumb. I'm going to make it or break it on my own. I won't do it on someone else's dime. Thanks for calling. Take care of yourself. Just as she was about to end the call, her manager's voice shouted over the phone. Are you crazy? Eva said firmly. Not in the least. I have never felt so clear-headed before. In the past, she had to compromise and put in the work to climb the fame ladder. She took less than stellar scripts and appeared on various talk shows. She was beyond all of that now, though. She wasn't willing to compromise any longer. Dreams were important to her, and she wanted to keep them from her own dreams. She didn't want anyone else meddling in her dreams. I think you're really crazy. Do you know whom you're going against? It's the Reynolds family. Eva, you've been with the entertainment circle for so long. Don't you remember what happened to other celebrities who came before? The ones who went against James? They're working at car washes and in restaurants as waitresses. Do you really want that for yourself? Eva did not speak. She knew the consequences. But this was her life. It was about time she had control of it again. There will be no one behind you. There will be no one behind you. No one to help you clean up the messes or the scandals. You mean the scandals you manufactured? We won't be there to pick up the pieces. The entire entertainment community could choose to blacklist you. Where would you be then, without us to change their mind? I guess I'll be washing cars. Eva sighed. Although her manager's words were a threat, she spoke the truth. Offending the Reynolds family was the equivalent of career suicide. Eva knew it and still willingly held her ground. Eva shifted in her chair before saying, I've already made my decision. Thank you so much for your concern. I feel so warm and bubbly now. I've decided. Now please, stop calling me. Why can't see reason? Why can't you just realize what a predicament you're in? You can't. Eva disconnected the call, tired of hearing her manager's voice. With her true colors in plain view, her manager really was an ugly person. Tainted and jaded by James. Eva smiled at Nathan, who sat on the other side of the table. She shrugged. For a moment, the atmosphere became tense and no one spoke. James's attitude was very clear. Since there was no way to talk to Nathan, he would use the future to threaten Eva. But now that Eva had called his bluff, he wasn't sure how to proceed. Emily rubbed the space between her brows. I will go out tomorrow. I got information about the people in the photo. I will go meet them and see if they'll talk to me. Emily said, trying to ease the tension. Eva looked tired. She held Emily's hand and whispered, Emily, thank you. If you need anything from me, please let me know. I feel like a fifth wheel. You guys are doing all the work. It's okay. With your situation, there's not a lot for you to do. 
We want you to be less visible, not more, remember? Just leave it to us. Emily smiled and patted Eva's hand. James was smart enough to know that Eric wasn't going to just walk away from this situation. James would have his guard up, expecting Eric to counterattack in some fashion. The next day, Eric personally drove Emily to the airport and told her to be careful. Don't worry, I will come back as soon as possible. After boarding the plane, Emily took out her phone again and looked at her schedule from last night. The two cameramen were working on the same crew today. After the plane arrived, Emily used Nathan's connections to sneak onto the set. She got the information she needed and headed to the smoking area. Both cameramen were there, smoking and laughing. You think we'll find another sweet deal like we did the last time? The taller man asked. The shorter man was bald and chuckled. <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, the assistant director asked me how it was to be out with Eva. I told him sweet as cherry wine. The taller man laughed and said, I can't believe all the play we're getting just from those stupid pictures. Emily listened, her mood growing sour, her anger beginning to rise. Emily quietly put the phone back into her purse after making sure she had the record button pressed. She wanted to record the conversation. When they didn't recognize her right away, the two men stood up and looked at Emily with suspicion. Who are you? No one is supposed to be back here without clearance. What's wrong with you? Are you lost? Need someone to show you the way? The taller man's comment was laced with innuendo. It disgusted Emily. Not to be outdone by his counterpart, the bald man said, That's right, we're really good with directions. Emily raised her eyebrows and said, I am with the entertainment circle. I work with Eva's manager. I've been sent out here to clear up a few things. Apparently there's some talk about you two running your mouths in the bars around town. You could get us all in a lot of trouble if you're not careful. The two men quickly looked at each other and shook their heads at the same time. No way. We didn't say anything to anybody. Then why do we hear such rumors? Why would anyone make up a rumor about you two talking? That doesn't make any sense. The tall man tossed his cigarette down and stepped on it. Look, we didn't talk to anybody. We did as asked, posed Eva, and got paid. Plain and simple. That's it. As far as we're concerned, the deal is done. Emily's attitude remained undeterred. Is that so? Well, gentlemen, I hate to tell you this, but James doesn't believe you. Unfortunately, you're not going to be working on this production anymore. You are to pack your things and head home. Remember the confidentiality clause? You're not able to share any information with anyone about this. Understand? Wait, wait, wait. We're being fired? The bald man asked. We prefer to call it reassigned. Emily offered a curt smile. I suggest you get moving, gentlemen. Her attitude left no question that she meant business. The two men took a step toward her, the tall man tossing his cigarette down, embers dancing away in a spray. We have the evidence, remember? You can't just throw us out with the trash. We have the pictures and videos and audio recordings. You guys were supposed to destroy the evidence. Are you telling me you still have it? Emily asked. It was her turn to step toward the two men. We know how the game is played. We've been doing this long enough to know to hold on to the evidence to cover your own butt. Do you have any idea what this would do if it got out that the entertainment circle was blackmailing their own artists? The company would go under the inside of a week. Looking at the bald man standing in front of her with her arms folded, she knew she had him. He stepped right into her trap. It was perfect. He admitted to having the evidence on tape, so she needed to push again. Her expression shifted as she asked, Show me the evidence first. If what you say is true, then we can talk. I'll notify James and we can work something out. The tall man asked, Why should we show it to you? Emily pressed on. Well, if you don't and I go back to James and tell him what happened, he will rain down on you like hellfire. So if you want to make play against James, I suggest you cooperate and show me what you have. Otherwise, I walk. The taller of two frowned. He whispered something into the bald man's ear. The bald man nodded and took out his phone. After he scrolled through several files, he stopped and played a particular video. It showed them staging the photos of Eva. The voice on the recording belonged to none other than her manager. This isn't the other one either. Emily had to hide her excitement. 
this isn't the only one either. Emily had to hide her excitement. If she could get copies of the video, it would be a piece of cake to get James to cease and desist. This is better than any photo. Emily nodded in agreement. It was better than a photo. I'll need the video to take back with me. Why should I give it to you? Do you think I'm crazy or something? I'm not giving you this video. The bald man immediately put his phone away. Emily did not take her eyes off him. Do you still not understand? I am just a person who does not have much status under the entertainment circle. If I go back without the evidence, then they aren't going to believe me. They're going to think I'm trying to play some game and cut me loose. Copy the video for me and I'll take it back to them. The bald man puffed out his cheeks and thought. Eventually, he figured Emily was right and started preparing to send the video to Emily. That's when the tall man stepped in to interfere, and Emily's heart sank. Why couldn't this be easier? The tall man asked. From what you're saying, you're helping us? But don't you work for the same people we do? Why are you doing this? Emily's expression didn't change, she said. Yes, I do, because I am just an ordinary person like you. I have seen too many disgusting things in this industry. We are made to do a lot of things we don't like doing. If you give me the video, then you can negotiate personally with my boss. The men looked at each other and then finally nodded. The bald one got his phone out again and sent the video to Emily's phone. It took almost five minutes, but she had it in her possession. Emily held her phone up and wiggled it back and forth. Don't worry, I'll let her know your part in all of this. Thank you for cooperating. She found a quiet coffee shop and started to watch the video. She was looking for any details possible. The voice that came first belonged to Eva's manager. She seemed to be in a hurry. Eva will be out in a while. When the time comes, the two of you will hold her separately and try to act as intimate as possible. Got it? But what are you doing? Are you sure she wants this too? Of course I am, you fool. Don't worry about it. Anyway, when the time comes, the money will be transferred to your cards. Just do as I say. Eva is already so drunk that she is practically unconscious. She has no idea what's happening. She'll never know it was you two. All right, we will do as you say. Don't worry. Then there was silence. In the video, Eva was carried out by a woman she didn't recognize. Eva was clearly unconscious. The two cameramen began to pose with her and snap pictures. It was disgusting. From beginning to end, Eva's eyes did not open. After Emily finished watching, although she felt disgusted and hatred toward her manager, Emily realized the gold mine she now possessed. It was the best possible thing for Eva. Emily let herself relax just a bit before preparing for the next plan. During her return flight, James launched another offensive. It was another official press release on official letterhead from the entertainment circle. It was not kind to Eva. Hello everyone, this is an official press release concerning Eva, one of our artists. As you may know, she has been embroiled in some nasty rumors over the last few days. Without communicating with the company, Eva issued public criticism concerning us. This is slander. We don't take that lightly. Unfortunately, we were never able to contact Eva. During this period of time, all of Miss Eva's work was suspended because of her actions and lack of cooperation with us. Both production teams had to stop work and wait. Also, all of her commercial engagements, including magazines, social media ads, and print ads, have been canceled as well. Eva's actions have severely delayed her progress in all aspects. Not only is she not being responsible for her own acting career, but she is also not responsible for all the staff members working for her. We hope Eva reaches out to us so we can address her issues and stop running away from her responsibilities. Emily closed the comments and took a deep breath. This comment wasn't as bad as earlier ones, but it would still sting when relayed to Eva. She hoped Eva was as strong as she seemed so she could get to the other side of this mess together. She suspected Eva would keep her word and not look at the social media apps, but she still worried. It is hard in today's world to be offline for any extended period of time. Accusing her of slander was one way for James to try and scare them. He could file a lawsuit against Eva for slander. It had no merit, but it would be yet another way of publicly humiliating her. They played dirty pool regardless of who was pulling the strings. Eva's manager or Nathan's father. They would never be above board. They couldn't be trusted. 
Did James not realize the more he acted like this, the bigger the divide would be between himself and Nathan? It would make their relationship even more divided. That night, Emily got off the plane. Outside the airport, Eric was waiting with John. The little guy bounced up and down in the back seat, excited about something. She couldn't help but smile. It was truly amazing the effect Eric and John had on her. It didn't matter how bad her day was or how foul her mood was. When she saw the two of them and felt their love for her, everything else just fell away. She finally relaxed as she made her way toward the two men in her life. John jumped up into her arms and gave her a big hug. Eric came to join them, the three sharing one big hug. Emily, you'll never guess whom I met. Please tell me, whom did you meet? Emily asked. Eva, she came to see me. I got an autograph and a picture of her. How cool is that? Very cool. So very, very cool. On the way here, she had already told Eric everything that had happened. So after sitting in the car for a while, she said, Since we have settled the matter of the photos, we need to start putting pressure on James to stop releasing the official press releases. They continually keep putting pressure on Eva. The Reynolds family has been arrogant for a long time. Eric said, his tone sharp. James was unhappy with how things were progressing with the Eva situation. He called Eva's longtime manager, Louis Van Buren, and asked to see her. He couldn't believe Eva continued to oppose him publicly. He had to teach her a lesson. When Louis arrived, he stood from behind his desk. He was not a happy man. His appearance disheveled. His eyes bloodshot. Where is Eva now? James asked, his voice tired. I'm not sure, but after checking the flight records, I think she went to New York City. Louis sighed, her voice filled with anxiety. James's expression became angry. Didn't you tell her the consequences? Yes, of course. Eva is not a fool and knows the consequences. We followed your instructions in the letter. If she chooses to come back to us, it will be quite difficult for her to be the star she once was. For all time, the name Eva will forever be linked to these scandals. She will never be able to put them behind her. The more James spoke, the more excited he became. He had been very worried recently. His son, whom he had been nurturing as his successor, was involved in a car accident. It crippled him, relegating him to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. His face had been disfigured as well. Nathan was no use to him, obsessed with his useless cooking skills. It was ridiculous. Nathan wanted nothing to do with the company James had worked every day to build. He needed Nathan to come back into the fold. He needed him to come back and manage things for him. He couldn't very well leave the company and all of its holdings in the hands of someone who had lost the use of both of his legs and with a ruined face. They were in the business of entertainment, a world of beautiful people. He couldn't have some freak show running things. It would cripple their business. What was he supposed to do? It left him no choice except to lure Nathan back. Therefore, he used every bit of leverage he could, including ruining Eva's career. We need to push out press releases more frequently. I want social media swarming with rumors and innuendos. Make it so she can't show her face without ridicule. Of course, I'll get that ready right away. James frowned and asked, By the way, has Eric been doing anything recently? He hadn't heard anything for some time about Eric and it made him nervous. The man wielded a great deal of power and influence. Had he relented finally? Had he given up trying to help Nathan and Eva? No, he hasn't been involved in anything having to do with the entertainment circle. It seems like he has just been focused on the business dealings of the Parker family. Louis said, sifting through a few papers she had had with her. James was a cruel man, ruthless in almost every way. Because of that, he was far more cautious than most. He knew how powerful Eric was, and what it would mean if he went head-to-head -head with the entertainment circle. It would all but deplete the entertainment circle's resources. He cleared his throat and said, No matter what, we can't underestimate the Parker family. Let's keep an eye on them. We can't let anything go wrong. The next day, Emily woke up and checked the internet stories about Eva. As expected, James had released several other posts ridiculing Eva and her handling of the situation. It also speculated that she may have killed her child not to be burdened with her burgeoning film career. The title, Eva Get Out of the Entertainment Circle, press release, was shared countless times on all social media platforms. 
others in the industry were also starting to weigh in, which was disturbing. While Emily knew the words were just baited and fodder for the masses, it hurt her to read. She could only imagine what Eva would feel if she had read them. It is no wonder that so many artists would suffer from depression. She sent a message to Nathan asking how she was doing. He replied quickly and said Eva was doing her best to stay busy and not check her social media accounts. After tidying up, she immediately followed Eric to the Parker family office. Who were all those staff members in the photos? Eric asked. They were cameramen. They had a video that showed Lois involved in staging the photos. I feel like that is our last bit of leverage over James. If we continue to guide public opinion the way we planned, I think it will work, and we shouldn't be any problems. Although she was confident in what she had in her hands, she was still a little nervous regarding the entertainment circle and its reach. Eva would no longer have a future in the entertainment industry if their plan failed this time. I am ready. Emily, we will cooperate with you anytime. Damon said with a smile. No matter what, she wanted to do her best to handle the situation. She had seen Eva's resume. She was a person who was positive and sincerely loved working in the industry. She loved acting. In the film industry, it was hard to find many with pure hearts. It was a machine that chewed up countless actors and actresses each and every day. It was hard not to become jaded in an environment such as that. Therefore, she wished with all of her heart that they could completely restore Eva's reputation and not give James any leeway. Damon, I know it's still early, but I get the feeling James is planning something big today. Why don't we go ahead and get started? What do you think? Emily asked, her voice soft but determined. You're right. Damon did not have any opinions. The two of them perfected the process again and quietly waited for the time to come. James went straight to the public relations department with Lois in tow. Are you ready? James's expression was tense, his eyes alive with a disturbing fire. Lois quickly nodded. It has been arranged. We have already approved everything they are about to send out. We've scheduled the release for 1 p.m. Everything is ready. A satisfied expression finally appeared on James's face. Nodding slightly, he said, I will personally supervise this matter. By the time we're done, Eva will be nothing but a pile of dust. Don't worry, Lois said, her voice filled with respect. The entire public relations department was waiting for 1 p.m. to come. However, they never had the chance to carry out their plan. At 12 o'clock, an alert suddenly appeared on Lois's phone. She realized it was from someone in the film industry. Since she didn't want to miss anything, she read it. It came from an anonymous account, but was trending and trending hard. It was fast becoming viral. Her mouth went dry as she realized what it said. This was bad. Real bad. The account posting the information had just opened the account a few hours prior. It had posted only one message, but it was a doozy. It talked about how the entertainment circle had deliberately set up Eva, using their own authority and reach to bully and control their acts. Lois quickly looked at the time it was posted and realized it had to have been posted via an automated procedure. She knew she had to let James know immediately. James, look! Lois quickly passed her phone to James. He read it as she said. This account was just created, and it posted this new story about us. James frowned and sneered. It's just a pathetic attempt to discredit us. It's not a big deal. We knew they would try something like this. We need to release a message and discredit this source. Tell them Eva and her supporters completely fabricated this story. Tell them it is false news. Okay, I will deal with it now. Lois got to work, forming the release in less than a minute. She sent it to the public relations department and had them release it with all the fanfare they could muster. As soon as their message was posted, public opinion shifted again, insulting Eva and her supposed supporters. Lois knew there would likely be more counterattacks by Eva's supporters. She would have to be ready for it. James couldn't help but snicker. They have no idea who they're challenging. It's obvious by this lame attempt. They have no foot to stand on. We need to release our other information now. Hit them while they're down and create a tidal wave of viral posts. Let's do it. Lois did not dare to wait. She got up to get the public relations department started on the new onslaught when her phone alerted her again. It was from the same account. She was helpless to check it. She immediately regretted it. 
Why hadn't she just kept her head down and gone to the public relations offices? She read the message. I am not Eva. I am just a person who could not bear to see someone as sweet and caring as Eva be dragged through the muck by the likes of the entertainment circle. They have been involved in such dirty antics before. Some have even been illegal. Are we really surprised? It's an innate part of the industry. For those who feel Eva is undeserving of a fair shake, please watch the video below. This video leaves no doubt about who is to blame for releasing the photos and bad press about Eva. Why not ask the entertainment circle to explain this video? It is unretouched and clearly shows what happened. It's time to put a stop to the entertainment circle. Below the post was a link to the video. This wasn't good. She felt her heart racing in her chest. Do you still want to publish the new material? Asked one of the staff from the public relations department. She shook her head. Let's put it on hold for a moment. She placed the phone on the table so James could view it and push play. But after seeing the first five seconds, Lois's face immediately paled. Her legs felt weak. She recognized the setting for the video and the two camera operators she had hired to help set up the photos. This was not good. It was not good at all. James was furious. What's going on? Why is there such a video? Didn't I tell you to be careful countless times? Don't leave any evidence behind? This is clear evidence of what we've done. I really don't know. I never knew anyone was recording a video. Lois's chest became tight, her eyes wide. She chewed on her thumbnail, wondering what they were going to do. Hurry up and contact the media. We have to shut this down. We cannot allow anyone to report on this matter. Remove the video. Take it down, no matter the cost. Take it down. But if we delete it, wouldn't it prove that we are guilty and admit that what the Post said was true? Lois asked. Her answer came in the form of a slap. How else are we supposed to deal with your mistake? What do you suggest? We asked the internet nicely not to spread this? Give me a break. We have to move fast. Do it now. Lois rubbed her cheek, the sting from his slap still burning. As she was preparing to have the public relations department send out a new press release, they came to her with more bad news. James, we can't stop the post from going viral, nor can we take down the video. It's already been shared too many times. There's no way to track all the copies of the video across the internet. Sir, we've tried to have the account removed, but we are unable. It has been made a protected account. What should we do now? The fury of the internet had been unleashed fully upon him. James felt a headache coming on. Now that the video had been exposed, everything they had done had been made public on the internet. Furthermore, this video cannot be deleted. Give me your phone. I want to contact you personally. James could not control his anger and panic. He decided to show up personally in the public relations department. He started making calls to his contacts, but no one answered. Silence raged, sending a clear message. Damn it, go and buy some ammunition from social media influencers. Find a way to suppress the popularity of this video. James shouted. Another staff member asked. Are we going to release what we prepared earlier? Of course not, get lost. James gestured at the man wildly. He was fast losing control. The others were so scared that they quickly got busy with their work. Lois was trembling. She did not expect things to develop in this direction at all. She only hoped that they could smoothly settle the battle. She knew she was in trouble. She was on the video. It was her fault. But where did the video come from originally? She had to find out. It was the only way she could get to the bottom of it all. It had to come from someone who was there at the time the video was taken. Was it someone on the entertainment circle staff? Was it someone she had hired? Was it someone she had anchored in the past? Were they trying to get even with her? Lois grew more agitated the longer she thought about it. She wondered if it could be competitors. Were they trying to ruin the entertainment circle standing? People had begun to turn Eva's pictures against her, even the ones where she appeared at charity events. They began to claim it was a sham. Well, those people were now changing their opinion. The tide had begun to turn. The troubling thing was, Lois wasn't sure there was anything they could do to control it. While at one time, the world was content with burying Eva under an avalanche of false claims and speculation. Things were different now. While no one had supported her during the onslaught, she now had that support. 
That changed with the posting of the video. At the onset of the scandal, the entertainment circle had been viewed as innocent. That wasn't the case any longer. Now there was a great deal of speculation about their part in it all. The video exposed the truth. The ugly underbelly of James and his company, the entertainment circle. There was no doubt what the video had been meant to do. It had been created by a high-standing employee of the entertainment circle. These factors, and the fact that the video had not been doctored in any way, brought the internet's fury down upon James and his beloved company. Every comment drove the stake deeper and deeper into the heart of the entertainment circle. I can't believe what the entertainment circle has done to Eva. I used to think she was guilty of everything they said she had done, but I now realize how wrong I was. She is a great artist, a lasting actor of incredible talent. I can't wait to see her next project. I hear she's on track for an Oscar nomination. This scandal was nothing more than manufactured madness. What exactly were they thinking? Eve has been trying to set the record straight from the beginning, and no one wanted to offer her the chance. I'm glad the truth has finally come out. The industry had always resorted to less than proper tactics when it came to managing its talent. Why did the entertainment circle seek to do this to Eva, one of the most beloved actresses of her time? We all should apologize for judging her so harshly, before all the facts were known. From the bottom of my heart, Eva, I am sorry. All the comments began to support Eva. Anytime one of James's trolls popped up and posted something slanderous, they were immediately pounced on by Eva's supporters. The tide had truly turned, and he was reaping what he had so carefully sowed. Things could shift and change in a heartbeat in today's digital world. If you aren't careful, you could be run over by a train in a matter of seconds. That train wouldn't care if you were maimed or killed. It just kept chugging. And that's what was happening to the entertainment circle. There was no way this train could be stopped. All social media platforms were showing vast support for Eva. James brought Lois and the upper management team together to come up with a solution. But no one had any suggestions that would help. If we don't reply now, we will completely lose control. This has turned into an epic debacle. What can we do? What do you want us to do? James was furious, his face red as he ranted. The video is real. How can we reply? Do you want to admit that we were making it up? That would only make matters worse. There is no solution for this. But this isn't a long-term solution. An older gray-haired man said, While we're trying to reduce the popularity of the news, more and more people are sharing and reposting the video and the news story. It can't be controlled. Our company's image has already been tarnished. If this continues, we might be ruined forever. The board knew the truth of the matter. Eva had been one of their centerpieces. She was one of the planet's biggest stars, and they lost her because of James. Not only that, but their image had also been tarnished. It was all James's fault. He had destroyed the name of the company for his own selfish intentions. No one would be able to calm the storm. It was raging all around them. James's face was red, his eyes blank. I will personally see to it that this news is stopped. James took a deep breath. How had he been played so easily by Eva? How had she done this? 